Well, since you have all arrived looking so beautiful and right on time, I know without question you remember to spring forward. Congratulations. When everybody gets here at about 10, you can just look at them and wave. <laughs> spring is in the air. The sun is shining, the birds are singing, the flowers are blooming, motorcycles are revving. Aren't you glad? Images of golf courses and fishing poles and gardens and strawberry patches are filling our previously winter-logged minds. In fact, for many of us, if we never saw another snowflake again in our lives, that would be just fine with us. Am I right? Yeah. There's just something about this time of year that is so absolutely refreshing. And if you're anything like me, this recent, these recent bursts of sunshine have triggered within me this sincere desire for a new beginning, a fresh start, if you will. A desire to step out of the gloomy gloom of winter and into the bright new beginnings that this season of life offers. So let me ask you this. As you reflect back over the last year or two years, are there some things that you, given the opportunity, might do differently? Most of us, right? Because things don't always turn out the way we expect them to. Sometimes you give life what you feel like is your all and things still kind of fall apart. Sometimes you study for the test and you still fail. Sometimes you work really hard at your job and you still get laid off. Sometimes you work really hard at, at taking care of your body and being healthy and you still get sick. Sometimes you work really hard at taking care of your family and your marriage and you still face struggles there. Things don't always turn out the way we expect them to. Now, the danger is getting so stuck in those past memories and thoughts that we fail to see the dynamic opportunities that are in front of us in the future. So with all of that in mind, today we're starting a brand new series of sermons called My Fresh Start. And here's our, our verse that will remain linked to this series. It's Psalm 51.10. It says, God, make a fresh start in me. Shape a Genesis week from the chaos of my life. And maybe that's exactly what you've been looking for, that new beginning, that fresh start, but you're just not sure where to start to get that fresh start. So let's start here. The first step towards my fresh start. Actually, this isn't really the first step. This is more like step zero. You can't even get to step one without this step. Okay, here it is. Forget the past. Focus on the future. You cannot even get to step one without this. Isaiah 43, 18. The Lord says, aren't you glad it's the Lord says and not Rev. Jeff says? If, if you ever receive sermons that are so focused on Rev. Jeff says, you better be calling the DS and saying, we got a problem. Okay? The Lord says, forget what happened before and do not think about the past. Look at the new thing I am going to do. You got a new building. You got a new preacher. <laughs> Look at the new thing I am going to do. It is already happening. Don't you see it? He's saying, forget about the past. It's over. It's done. The book is closed. And, and, and here's the thing. See, God is far more interested in your future than he is your past. And yet, some of us are so hung up on the mistakes of our past that we're thoroughly convinced that God is too. But the reality is, we've all made mistakes. We've all made poor choices that resulted in regret. I love what Maya Angelou said. She said, um, I have it here. 
I've learned that you shouldn't go through life with a catcher's mitt on both hands. How's that for a visual, right? You should not go through life with a catcher's mitt on both hands. You need to be able to throw something back. See, God wants us to throw back our painful past. He wants us to let go of our painful past and shift our focus to the future. He wants us to remember that every passing moment is another opportunity to turn it all around. Every passing moment is another opportunity at a, at a fresh start. Look at the new thing I am doing. It's already happened. You don't see it. In other words, you can't focus on the future if you're parked in the past. Make sense? Okay. Now that we have that foundation established, I want to give you what will be throughout this series a fresh start formula. And it's also, and, and start really should be, uh, it's an acronym. So imagine a period after each of the letters. And today we're going to look just at the S. Okay? And the first step towards my fresh start is to stop. We have to stop making excuses. Proverbs 28, 13. People who conceal their sins will not prosper. But if they confess and turn from them, they will receive mercy. So if I truly want that fresh start, I have to stop making excuses for why I am where I am. I have to stop making excuses for why I am who I am. I have to stop blaming other people, stop seeing myself as a victim, and start taking responsibility for my own mistakes. Now, please hear what I am not saying. Okay, this is really important, so I want to be really clear. I'm not saying that other people are innocent when it comes to the problems and pains that may be in your life. Other people can hurt you. Other people can leave the scars of their dysfunction on your life. So I'm not saying that other people are blameless when it comes to the pain that you feel. But there comes a time in life for all of us when we need to stand up and declare no more. I am a victim no more. I am responsible. I am responsible for my life and the direct direction it goes from this microsecond forward. Now, if you're watching online, I want you to type in to the comment box, I'm responsible. Just type it right in there. And I want you to say with me, I'm responsible. Are you ready? I'm, I'm responsible. responsible. So I refuse to keep letting their dysfunction hang around my neck like an albatross that keeps weighing me down and keeping me stuck. Life is too short and my God is too good. Amen? Amen? It's time. It's time we step up and fess up to the role I play in my own tragedy. It's time I stop making excuses, correct my course, and invite the Holy Spirit to create in me a new heart and a fresh start. I believe, I believe with all my heart, I believe that my tomorrow will be brighter than all my yesterdays. The first step towards making a fresh start is to stop. Stop making excuses and then start. Start making progress. God, make a fresh start in me. Shape a Genesis week. Genesis is that spark, that new beginning, right? From the chaos of my life. See, there are two different kinds of people in this world. There are those that make excuses and those that make progress, and you can't be both. So we have to choose which one will I be. Stop making excuses. Start making progress. Just be honest with myself about my role I play in my problems. Now, we want to ask the question, what keeps us stuck? Ever feel stuck in life? 
And the truth is, we could go on for probably days and days about the many things that keep us stuck. Keep us stuck in the past. Keep us stuck in our failures. Keep us stuck in unhealthy situations, unhealthy relationships. But the single greatest thing that keeps us stuck is very simply the fact that we give up way too soon. We quit, we stop, we raise the white flag of surrender and throw in the towel and declare defeat way too soon. Psalm 24, 16 says that the believer, the believer may suffer adversity and stumble seven times, but they continue to rise over and over and over again. Hebrews 10, 22 and 23. Let us go right into the presence of God with sincere hearts, fully trusting him. Let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm. For God can be trusted to keep his promise. Hallelujah. Amen. Here's the thing about failure. Failure is the path of least persistence. When trying times come, we just quit trying. Now, I've heard it said that if at first you don't succeed, skydiving is not for you. <laughs> but the truth is, if at first you don't succeed, Welcome to the human race. If at first you don't succeed, you're like all of us. Very few people succeed their very first time out. Very few people succeed in their first effort. It's, it's, we just oftentimes we quit right before we have that breakthrough moment. It's always too soon to quit. So failure is the path of least persistence, which therefore means that victory is the path of greatest persistence. Now, when John Creasy was about to publish his novel, he received, get this, 753 rejection letters from different publishers. Now, can you imagine the faith and the persistence that it took for him to march out to the mailbox day after day after day and receive rejection letter after rejection letter after rejection letter and still not quit. He endured 753 rejections before his book was ever published. But guess what? After that first book was published, he went on to publish another 563 books. Imagine if he had quit before the first one was published. It's always too soon to quit, and it's never too soon to act in faith. Never be afraid to launch out in a new direction, to try something new. The Bible says that the key to anything great in our lives is faith. You've got to have faith. How many have that song playing in their head now? Yeah. yeah. If you want to change your circumstances, you got to have faith. If you want to change the trajectory that your family seems to be drifting into, you've got to have faith. If you want to change anything in your life, you will have to have some faith. And we see this played out before us in Matthew chapter 9. Uh, in Matthew chapter 9, uh, Jesus is walking and these two blind men are crying out to him. Over and over and over again, they're crying out, have mercy on us, have mercy on us. Here's what happened. Matthew 9, 28. The blind men came to him, and he, being Jesus, Jesus asked them, do you believe that I'm able to do this? Pause. Bring this in to your living room. And you're praying. You may not be praying, God, heal my blindness. You might be praying, God, heal my children. You might be praying, God, heal my finances. You might be praying, God, heal my fill in the blank. God is asking you, do you really believe that I can do this? Or are you just asking? What are you expecting? Do you believe that I'm able to do this? Yes, Lord, they replied. 
Then, Jesus touched their eyes. Now here it is, verse 29. This is the, the, the climax of the verse. According to your faith, say that with me, according to your faith, will it be done to you? And their sight was restored. According to their faith. Such a very simple, short statement, and yet, and yet it holds such incredible power in our lives. Now notice how Jesus tested the faith of these two blind men, and they had more faith than most perfectly sighted people that I know today. He tested their faith. He was going to work in their lives to the extent of their faith. He left it up to them to manage the magnitude of his work in their lives. He said, according to your faith, will it be done? So this leads me to believe that we tend to get out of life what we expect out of life. These two blind men were crying out to Jesus, expecting him to heal their blindness, expecting him to return their sight. So the big question for us Today, as we cry out to Jesus for this fresh start, what are you expecting? What are you expecting? Well, I think it's going to be another depressing, rigorous, unrewarding year, a real bummer. If that's, if that's your perspective, guess what? Guess what kind of year you're likely to have? Depressing, rigorous. Unrewarding. A real bummer. <laughs> when it comes to your life, what do you expect? When, it, when you sit at home and you ponder your tomorrows, what do you expect? When you imagine the future of this church, what do you expect? The same old, same old, day in, day out, mundane, mediocre, middle of the road, nothing's ever going to change routine. Because I have news for you, if that's what you expect, that's very likely the path that your life or this church will begin to wander down. And nothing new, nothing exciting, nothing transforming will happen. Is that really what you want out of this fresh start? Just kind of a photocopy of yesterday? We tend to get out of life what we expect. Because according to your faith, will it be done to you? So here's, here's my prayer. Here's my prayer for you in your personal life and for us as a family of believers my prayer is that we all begin expecting more. Start expecting more. Now maybe you've heard this, this little uh, poem before. Here's what it says. I may not have put, did I put it in? If not, that's okay. No, that's so. Oh, uh, don't show them that one yet. That was a secret. <laughs> it's in my notes, but it's not on the slide. Okay, I got it. <clears throat> it says, risk more than others think is safe. Care more than others think is wise. Dream more than others think is practical. Expect more than others think is possible. Isn't that amazing? I love that last part. Expect more than others think is possible. Start expecting more of yourself. Start expecting more from your omnipotent God. Start expecting more from your future and your life. If you really want that fresh start that this season of life offers you, expect more. Be ready in any given moment to shake the catcher's bit off of both hands. Let go of who you are in favor of who you can become. And contrary to popular belief, it's never too late, and it's never too early to start fresh. So as spring comes rolling in, you can be one of two people. You can be someone who makes excuses, or someone who makes progress. Which one will you be? Father, we thank you. 
for the sun that has been shining, for the positive impact that it has on our lives. Lord, we pray that, that this, this sense of a new beginning, this sense of a fresh start, uh, we just ask that that would begin to take root in our hearts, in our souls, that it would begin to grow and flourish into not just a feeling, but definable actions that we are actively taking to alter the course of our future. All, of course, at the divine leading of your Holy Spirit. Set a path for us, Lord, and empower us to walk there in it. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I found it. Dead on. <laughs> it was in the wrong spot. It was in the wrong spot. That's the preacher's fault. <laughs>